Dialogue is king. We've looked at recording dialogue, but now we're going to bring it into a DAW and do a dialogue edit, a process of cleaning and correcting any problems. I'll use techniques that the best dialogue editors in the world use and show you a few more tricks to make your recordings shine. In a previous show, we recorded some dialogue, so now we're going to take it into your DAW and clean it up and address any problems that may have occurred and make your dialogue sound perfect for your project. There are two situations that you might find yourself in. Editing your own dialogue for a sound production or handing your beautiful recordings over to a video editor. In either situation, back up all your recordings and check your notes. Make sure everything in your notes tallies with what's on your drives and make sure to include any wild track audio in a place that's easy to find. A dialogue edit happens when all the dialogue is locked off. In other words, you're working to a finished timeline. When editing, most editors are focused on the picture, so editing audio is not a priority for them. That's why we have to do our dialogue and sound edit. So step one, duplicate your dialogue tracks and then hide and deactivate the duplicated tracks. Now you have a safety copy of the dialogue should anything go wrong whilst you're editing. What we're going to do is we're going to look at everything running in Pro Tools just for giggles, because we haven't looked much at Pro Tools yet. So what I want you to do is um, have a listen to this, because I'm going to go through a few things, just initial things for a dialogue edit that we should be looking at. They will make all the world of difference, okay? So first things first, and as I said in the introduction, duplicate your tracks, okay? You got your duplicate tracks here, um, see there? Okay, duplicate. I want to do one duplication of this. There's my duplication of the tracks, okay? That is the carbon copy of this. And I'm going to select this, and I'm going to uh, hide and make inactive. Now I'm back to the original track. And I tell you why you do that a thousand times in one's life, will you'll find yourself with... You've gone ahead so many steps and you've done so much and then you find, oh, accidentally I did, you know, cut out this. Something fell out. Something, something happened. And you have to go back all those steps and undo all that work. If you have a duplicate, you just show the duplicate again, grab that little piece, go back up, fix what you were fixing at that point, and all the rest is fine. So that is a super important thing you have to do, okay? That is your duplicate tracks. Now, it might be terminology in your own DAW, something else, I think, um, disable tracks in Nuendo, and then you go to hide them. So, um, yeah. Each, each product has different terms for these things, but the, the actual act of duplicating your tracks is super, super, super important. Okay, so we moved into that. You duplicated your tracks. I'm also working off um, a really decent set of speakers. Like, I mean, my speakers are big old Genelex. They're not big old, they're brand new, big Genelex, beautiful yokes, uh, 4080s, I think they are. And I use them for all dialogue editing and surround sound mixing in this studio. So I can hear absolutely everything. So there's no point in going into your uh, dialogue edit with a pair of board earphones because you're just not going to hear what you should be hearing. You need to be monitoring properly. So a decent set of speakers or a decent set of headphones at worst. <laughs> okay, so get as best a monitoring as you can manage, as best you can, okay? Okay, great. So first things first, we're going to zoom in here. I've just muted some of this tracks. I want to play both tracks, okay? So we have a lav and we have a um, shotgun. So here's our... A wav is a type of audio format. Let's explore the more common types of audio formats that are generally used. Okay, so you heard that. I'm just going to switch over to the next track. A WAV is a type of audio format. Let's explore the more common types of audio formats 
that are generally used. Okay, so you heard the boom there in the second one because you can hear loads more room or whatever, and it's a much thinner sound in the first one. So you know you have the lav, even though they're labeled differently on this session. Thanks, Mr. Editor. I rest my case. Um, so the next thing to do is we have a load of noise on there. Um, the second most important thing is, and the first thing I always check before I go into my dialogue edit is, do I have handles? Handles, this is your um, event or your clip or whatever the term in the DAW it calls. That's the event. That is what happens in that space from that point to that point in audio. The audio file that it's referencing could be bigger sitting on your hard drive. So if you see here, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Now you see that I have lovely, generous handles, okay? And the reason I want those big, generous handles from the editor is, thank you very much, editor, all is forgiven, um, is that if I'm looking at this, let's explore. I mean, that big old breath was big old... <laughs> and there's loads of phlegm or snot in there or whatever it is. Okay, look at that. See that handle? Now I found loads of air from the specific take. Oh, you won't be able to hear it in that track, sorry. So you hear the room there around the microphones at that specific point. Okay, so we'll basically group these tracks because what I do on one track, I'm going to do on the other track and then basically build it up. But I will split them apart as well if I'm finding that one take is better than the other. But in the dialogue editor, what we're going to do is we're going to group these tracks together for the edit, not the mix, the edit, okay? And then when I pull this apart, now I have both tracks and both tracks I'm working off. I copy those. So imagine this was a big click in his throat or something desperate. I paste that in there. And now, because I have the air from there, I just go, bump. Format. Let's explore the more common type. So if I undo that, so that big breath. Audio format. Let's explore the more. So imagine somebody in the room moved a chair at that point, okay? So all I have to do is go in there, select the area, paste in that air. Audio format. Let's explore the more common types of audio. Clean as a whistle. So that's the air, and that's why we need handles. It's also why we need um, wild track. And I will always say to you, whatever recording you're doing, STFU, or whatever it is, <laughs> shut the up, okay? Because you need to get that air from everyone's mics in that position with the dialogue record, okay? Um in the record dialogue show we just did, that's what I'm saying to you. You need the air from around there. If you only have that amount of um, audio in your clip and you don't have the handles and you don't have the luxury of all that air that I was given in that handle, then you're goosed. So you need the wild track and you need it somewhere safe and available to you and the editor. If the editor has time to do a plumos on this, Fabulous. Okay, so here we go. So that's just one point there. In this, you're hearing, I'm just going to zoom in here again, okay? In here, you're hearing lots of noise. I'm just going to go and show you something here. I've set this up already, but I'm going to bypass these, okay? And we'll look at these in two seconds. This is uh, an EQ, and it's also a plugin that you should be looking at as well. Um, there's lots of different stuff that can help. And the reason I would suggest all these plugins is because, man, it saves you hours of time. And if you find yourself shooting a lot, if you're a videographer, you will have a lot of footage that you could do with and just put in the plugin across your timeline. And I'll save you going in and nitpicking and cutting out and thing because you're a videographer, you're a self shooter, you, you're under pressure for time and budget and stuff like that. So, some of these plugins I'm going to suggest to you are going to be super, super, super um, handy for you just to lash them in on your timeline. Gently, gently, gently with them. Experiment with them. Say, you know, with Accusonus Era, you get a big knob and you bring up the noise reduction. Maybe 40% is too much. It's affecting the intelligibility of the dialogue. So dial it back to 35 or dial it back to 20. You're still getting lots of noise reduction, but the sound of the audio is so much better. 
you're not squishing it, squashing it all the way down, okay? So have a think about that when you're playing with these plugins. Okay, so if we listen to this, is a type of audio format. Let's explore the more common types of audio formats that are generally used. Okay, I want you to look at this plugin. This is my new gen, and this is a visualizer. So if you can't hear, um, you know, below 20 hertz or whatever, you're gonna be able to see them on this on this meter. So look. Let's explore the more common types of audio formats see all the bass that are generally there? used. Okay, see all the bass end there? There's a lot going on there. So with that, I think there's way too much bass end. So I'm gonna bring in some EQ, and I'm gonna turn that EQ on. I'm gonna, sh this with the high pass filter. So I'm just shelving that down to 27 hertz, listen. Let's explore the more common types of audio formats that are generally used. Okay, and see on the visualizer. Let's explore the more common types of audio formats that are generally used. Okay, and turn that on. Let's explore the more common so types of audio formats. So there's much more bass end on there. there. See that? But I'm rolling off all that dirt, all that room, all that building rumble, traffic down the street, all that sort of stuff. I'm rolling it all off and I'm getting the intelligibility. I'm rolling off um, frequencies that are not in the range of human speech. So I'm getting rid of all the dirt and the speech is coming out. So high pass filter is always one and I put that on the tall track so there you go I'm going to duplicate that on that track as well so now I have two cleaner tracks I've gotten rid of all that rumble based bull dirt down the bottom end and we should be able to hear that let's explore the more common types of audio formats that are generally used Okay, so now we're in much better shape. We've gotten rid of a ton of dirt already. So we've dealt with the handles, we've dealt with duplication. I'm just going to put my visualizer over here because we don't need to look at that all the time. Another thing you should be looking at is breaths. I mean, there's an awful lot of edits that happen and they cut off the breath. So you see here between Audio two... Audio formats. I say scary because... Audio format. I want to boil them down. So if the edit was like this formats and then the root version of formats and then the see the clipped breath at the very start there okay so what i generally would do is i would pull the breath over from one side or the other if that wasn't possible if it was two different takes then you know little crossfade just smooth it out nicely formats and then the root version now my ear isn't getting distracted by going what what just happened there and I'm still listening to the message. I'm still listening to the audio that's going on there. Do you understand? So um, we're trying to make it as subtle on the air as possible so we're not distracted. We can just watch this and then clip breath. What was that? Subliminal? Oh, oh okay. But I've just smoothed that out. Nice cross fade. Maybe bring in some wild track put it across the two clip breaths. Now I don't even have to think, but if his mouth on screen is gone, <gasps> you definitely need it. But if I don't, if I can get away with just putting some wild track across there, do it, absolutely, emphatically. Formats, and then the root versions of many that you'll see in the digital domain, like the internet. Let's start with the professional formats. They're used You hear the difference now coming in? Like the internet. Let's start with the... We're listening to one track there. We're listening to the top track is the lav. And hear the difference in the room, even with the high pass shelf. Digital domain, like the internet. Let's start with the professional formats. They're used all the time in professional audio... Okay, so I'm going to look at this high pass filter because you know what? I think that might be just something we could look at. Just a, just a little clean up. Digital We're at 72. Domain, Let's go up higher. Like the internet. Let's start with the professional formats. They're used digital domain like the internet let's start with the professional format hear the difference now i've shelved off all that dirt and it sounds much better it's just cleaner on the air i mean I'm, now i'm not getting distracted with all the dirt and the, all the frequencies lashing around so have a look digital at the high pass domain, filters like the internet let's start with the professional formats that you and if i bypass that digital domain like the internet Let's start with the professional form. Hear all that They're rumble. Used all oh my gosh. So we got rid of all of that. That's all good. Next thing to look at is mouth clicks, which is a huge distraction as well. I mean, in our everyday, we're used to listening to this, but it can be a distraction throughout a show. Um, and 
there's not a whole lot you can do about it. On your shoot, if you offer a green apple to the artist, if they chew on a green apple before their take, the amount of mouth clicks that it saves is phenomenal. That's including with voiceover, dialogue recording, interviews, you know, stuff like that. If you just carry a couple of green apples, offer it to them if they're too clicky. It cuts down on all the saliva. If that's not the case, then you could look at a, a plug-in like this. Um, I'm just going to show you here. Let's go to Isotope RX. Isotope RX is an amazing piece of kit. It's... Uh, you got D clicks, but you got mouth D clicks as well. And if I just run that across those two, just real quick, there's my plugin. I just do that and have a listen now. Let's start with the professional formats. They're used all the time in professional audio production. Do you hear that? Absolutely clean as a whistle. And you can either, um, as an audio suite in, in Pro Tools or hit F7 Innuendo, um, just write it across the lot. Now, if you find that it did a bad job down the way, you can go back to your duplicate, your hidden duplicate, and find that little bit that it's saved that little bit. That's why I say duplicate everything. But the mouth click in that is just extraordinary, and it saves you so much work. Now, you can zoom in and write out clicks, but it is super labor intensive. But if you can get the, if you find that your artist is way too clicky on the day, give them a green apple. It'll save you hours, hours in post if you have control over that sort of thing. This stuff might just arrive to you. So that's the mouth clicks. Um, and the green apple is all good for that. There are specific sounds in there as well. I, I marked up a couple of them here. Here's a click. Let's see. To try and make this clearer and give you oh, something. Did you hear that big click in my mouth? To try and make this clearer. Wow. Okay, so that's a big click. I don't know where that came from. Make this clearer. And you can see it there. See that? I'm going to zoom right into that. There's that big click. And we want to get rid of that because that is super big. Okay, so again, I'm just going to take some air, copy that. Sorry, separate it, copy it. And then I'm just going to zoom right in here. And look, I can either get my pencil like in Audacity, like you were doing earlier with your pencils, and write it out, okay? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me turn off the clip view, okay? Uh -huh. Gain line. See ya. So I'm in there at my waveform. See that? I can write it out. And I can write it out here, okay? Imagine. Imagine that was me writing it out. Fabulous. Well done, Keith. Thank you very much. No problem. And make this clearer. It's still fairly bad. So will I get rid of it with the mouth D click? Let's let's undo both of those. Wow. It's clearer. And Do you hear the difference? Absolutely phenomenal. But if you didn't have ORX, okay? Now there is a standard version and there's a professional version. So there is sort of price scales on that. But I, can, I um, selected some air there a second ago. So that's just two frames of air. Have a listen. This clearer. And okay, now we know that it's clear. clean, but there's a bit of a... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick crossfade. Crossfade there, crossfade there. It's clearer and give you... So now the big crack, it's gone, man. You know what I mean? And it's softer. And we can soften those fades as well. I have it set to snap at one frame or two frames. So you can set it softer and you can catch that C without that big crack. As I say, if you had ORX, it would be walk in the park, you know? Um, and then noise, banging noise. Here, look. DBFS, absolutely incredible. AIFF is born of the same genesis. There we go again. There's that sort of crash between two takes. Did incredible. AIFF. Hear the noise in there? So we got that. Somebody's moving in the in the room. There's a chair or there's something going on there. Incredible. AIFF is born of the same. Gone. So that's what I'm saying to you about air and handle. So you can grab that air. So make sure that you insist on getting air from our handles from the editor. And if you can get your wild track for the day, absolutely amazing balls. So I had a big bang here going on somewhere. Oh yeah, change of background noise. Listen to this. In post-production circles. Suddenly in the 1990s, things started. Do you hear the difference there? 
and post-production circles. Suddenly, in the 1990s, things started to change. Which crazy. So there was, I remember shooting that day, there was a lot of building noise because there was a big storm outside. So that's where the wind must have abated. So it's not causing the building noise as much. So there's a difference there. In OREX, there's another function called um, ambience. So you can actually sample the ambience from a quiet bit from your wild track or the air that you find in the handle and you can apply it on there so you're actually putting noise in to make it sound consistent and that's something you can do as well okay so with specific noises like the chair we were talking about you can get in and you can dig down with rx and you can write it out there's another brilliant program called um spectra layers from uh, Steinberg and, and that is amazing it's like Photoshop for audio and literally you can go right in you can get a 3D view and you can go right down and you nip out what you don't want and you listen to it again and it's completely gone I mean and the amount of times I've used it and you can use it um, as a plug-in in Pro Tools so you take the audio file out of Pro Tools or New Endo or whatever you're using bring it into um, um, spectral layers, do your work, and then send it back to Pro Tools or Nuendo. In Nuendo, it's native. You use it as an extension. But it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant piece of kit. For broad noises, you know, EQ is all good, you know? So trying to bring up the high, pa high shelf and uh, try and bring out broad noises. But in ORX, you can see a spectral... Um, visual representation and you can see the frequencies that you have to deal with you don't end up with just waveforms like you're doing an awful lot of DAWs so these simple simple little steps one duplicate two make sure you're on decent speakers three your handles or your wild track so important it's unbelievable clip breaths okay and then when you shelve off all the dirt, you're in a really good place already. And these are only really simple, simple steps. Imagine you were on a shoot and you could offer them a green apple. Now the clicks are going, okay? If not, get yourself a demo of Orex, put it across there and have a listen to the improvement. It could be a real lifesaver for some of you. Um, and Acusonis. Acusonis is brilliant as well. Uh, the Aero Bundle really decent price for really good tools to do the job so you had um, unfortunately you had no control over it and there was air conditioning in the room you just bring up the noise floor and you, you sample um, a bit in Orex and you just pull that specifically out or in Acusonis you pull up the dial of noise reduction not too much you've got to be really careful listening to what you're doing to the actual quality of the dialogue and you're just dialing out all the noise and you can get some really good results really quickly and save you hours, hours, dialogue editing, interviewing your ed your, uh, your dialogue, your um, interviews, your, you know, piece to camera, all these things. And it's really, really for videographers, those two tools. I mean, uh, if you could, I would suggest ORX because everyone uses it and it's just so handy across the board for so many jobs. Acusonis is just such a brilliant price point for the job that you get to do with it. It's a phenomenal price point. And you can buy each individual module. You don't have to buy the whole bundle at one go, you know. So if you found you had a job with tons of dirt on it and you just needed to dial off some of the room noise and stuff, pull up the dial, buy the plug-in for, I think it's about 50 bucks. But simple, simple little steps like that will go such a long way to making your um, edit sound super smooth. And I say, as I say, the message is everything. Absolutely everything. And you want to pull out all distraction to that. And that's why I'm saying if you had things like the Nugent Visualizer so you know what you're looking at, you can see specific things and you can see what's happening. If your ear isn't that attuned, you can see what's happening there, okay? Um, there's all sorts of visualizers out there. The Orex bundle, the Aero bundle, and these are all available to buy. Um, you can buy them anywhere. The mouth clicks are a big thing. Small things like breaths. 
softening those, pulling out the dirt, pops, plosives, EQ can do that. You can go right in and EQ out um, breaths and pops, P's and B's. And there's a D plosive on RX. You can use that. Um, D esser. So all your sibilants, which is up around five to eight kilohertz. EQ sibilants. Be really careful of the voice, okay? Be really careful. Um, because it's going to go to mix and you don't want to just completely crush down the voice. So dial back some of the EQ on sibilants. It's all those s, s. S's sounds and T's, okay? So, and the P's and the B's, you got to be really careful of well as well. You can EQ out some of them. They look like boom, big bass and stuff. You might be able to write them out, but um, if you can get a D-plosive plug-in, put it on, lash through it, it just gets you through your dialogue editor or your... In your... Um, yeah, let's call it a dialogue edit so much quicker. Um, and as long as you're not lashing on the amount of it, you should be good. So that's your dialogue edit. Back to you, Keith. Editing dialogue is an incredibly important part of your project. You're trying to make the message as coherent as possible. These few simple techniques will help you achieve that and make your project sound not only better, but pure professional. I'm Keith Alexander, and you've been watching Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And tell us what you think. You can like, you can comment, or you can share this video. And please, come by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks. And should you have any questions about any of your audio problems, gear, methods, anything, put them in the comments below. I will answer them.